Hi everyone. Uh, I finished watching the next VR Troopers episode. Uh, what was the name of this one? I think it was Memory Loss. Or Lost Memories. Okay. Decent episode. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about it, so I guess summary. Uh, starts off with the way most of these start off. Ryan's reminiscing about his father at the dojo. And this leads into him and his friends training at Tao Dojo. And then this woman comes in asking for help. She's lost her memory and has no idea who she is. Then at Zichter Industries, one of Zichter's minions informs him of the woman. And uh, we find out that she was evicted from a building he owned. Zichter tells his minions to silence the woman. And the kids too. And he goes to virtual reality. And this kind of surprised me, this whole silence the woman thing. It's kind of a dark line. It's pretty clear what the implication is. Go kill the woman and then also the troopers because they happen to be nearby, I guess. So then, uh, let's see, in virtual reality. Oh yeah, this is really weird. We get this really annoying, like, flashy shot, like, spinning around of all the monsters, which... The, the shot of the monsters is cool. The flashing, though, gets really annoying. And they should probably have an epilepsy warning on this. I could definitely see this being a scene they edit out of uh, foreign airings. So then, back at Tao Dojo, the troopers and Master Tao and a doctor are trying to help out the woman who's lost her memory. Then Ryan is called to the lab by Professor Hart. And then uh, Grimlord contacts Ivar and Icepa about his latest plan, which is... Um, uh, there's a monster underground doing something evil, I guess. I'm really not sure what exactly Grimlord's plan is in this episode. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, towards the end, it kind of looks like it's just general assault on the city. Uh, I don't know quite what's going on. So then, uh, Caitlin plans on using the newspaper she works at to run an article and find out the mystery woman's identity. So then, back at Tao Dojo, the woman is starting to regain some of her memories. She interrupts Tao's karate class, karate class, to like measure him with this measuring tape, which I guess Tao had somewhere in the dojo. There's no implication that she left, and she's like measuring him in the middle of a class, and so that gives some implication of uh, who she is, possibly, or some connection to her profession. And then, let's see, two of Grimlord's minions come in, disguised as uh, those women in the black dresses, and they pretend to be the woman's daughters. Tao asks if they have identification, and this was a smart move on Tao's part. This isn't the type of logic I would have expected from, like, a side character in a TV show like this. I feel like if this was a current Power Rangers season or something... Uh, Tao wouldn't have, like, questioned these women coming in and claiming to be, uh, this amnesiac woman's daughter. Daughters. Anyway, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. So, when he asks for identification, they excuse themselves to go out to their car, and as they're going out, they pass JB, who's coming in. And he recognizes them from somewhere. He says, I recognize those women. And I was trying to remember, in the last episode, or, like, uh, this is only episode four. Yeah, four. So did he ever see Grimlord's minions, like, in there, like, uh, those women in the black dress disguises? Or did he remember them from that scene where, uh, they're flying over and they stop to help out that stalled car? Because all the people there, they were in suits. So anyway, uh, JB goes out to follow them, and then they see him, and they reveal their true form, Skugs. And then there's a really cool fight scene between JB and the Skugs here. And I'm wondering if this was one of the scenes that Koichi Sakamoto directed, because it really feels like the type of kinetic action that he's really good at capturing. So then at Hart's lab, Jeb is using some equipment to make popcorn. Sure, why not? And then uh, Ryan comes in, dresses as a popcorn, explodes, and makes a mess. And then that never really means anything. It doesn't come back. It's just a goofy moment to be there because, well, So then uh, Ryan has to quickly transform to stop some of Grimlord's forces. Uh, Hart gives them this new flying cycle, which was designed by his father. Not that that matters, because Ryan immediately crashes it into one of the monsters. <coughs> All right. 
I'm trying to remember, does the cycle come back? I don't remember if the cycle ever comes back. I think this might be, like, yeah, Ryan just trashed it. <laughs> so then, uh, Hart calls the other troopers, and, uh, let's see, Ryan's okay, but he's lost his memory, paralleling the, uh, other plot going on in this episode, and it feels kind of convenient, but, like, I get it, but it's really dumb. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the troopers and Grimlord are both looking for him, Caitly and JB, they find the wreckage of the cycle, then they find, uh, Ryan looking at a flower, and he's like, huh, weird pretty thing, so then, uh, they pick him up, they take him back to the car, and, and they're going back to the lab, and Ryan's like, oh, hey, my pretty thing, I left it behind, and they're like, what? <laughs> Which is a nice little moment, I do like that, that was funny. Um, let's see, Hart tells JB and Caitlin to transform and take out Grimlord's laser bot. So then, uh, at the lab, Hart is able to partially restore Ryan's memory. Uh, JB, wherever, activates a new ability, Portal Command, that transports him and Grimlord's monsters to virtual reality. Okay. Okay. Uh, Caitlin takes out Ivar's tank, JB destroys the laser bot. And then later on, Jeb is talking to Ryan and uh, triggers his memory. And there's a really weird moment when Jeb is talking to Ryan. What he's saying is, Hey, remember the first time that we encountered some of Grim Lord's goons? I saved you guys. And we see like a new shot that isn't from a previous episode of some people disguised, and then, or some Skugs disguised as people. Then they reveal themselves to be Skugs. Jeb runs at them. And then Ryan's like, wait, Jeb, that never happened. And then his uh, memory is restored, thanks to Jeb's weird story. And that footage is shot kind of weird, and it made me wonder, was this like an, uh, an alternate pilot for VR Troopers? I know there are a few pilots for VR Troopers. There's the Cybertron pilot with Jason Frank playing Adam Steele. Then there's like an extended version of that. So... I'm assuming they also probably did a pilot with the cast that they ended up with that used both Metalder and Spielbahn footage. Interesting to speculate on. I don't know for sure if that's what this was or if this was just something that they shot and decided to squeeze in here. It's really weird footage. I don't quite know like how it would fit in a normal episode. So then, uh, Caitlin's article on the mystery woman was successful, and the woman's real daughter comes to pick her up, and the sight of her daughter restores the woman's memory, so happy ending. And that's the end. This episode has a lot going on. Like, constantly. From the very start to the end, there's always something going on. Uh, but it all, like, is cohesive, it all makes sense. The only weird thing is whatever Grimlord's plan was... Like I said earlier, uh, I don't know what his plan was exactly. Like, yeah, he wanted to kill the one woman because she would make Carl Zichter potentially look bad. He wants to kill the troopers just because, you know, they're the heroes of the show. He's the villain. He's got to kill the hero. But I don't really know what else... Like, he doesn't have a very... Uh, well thought out plan it seems to be just i have a bunch of monsters i'll send a whole bunch of monsters and then this one that will only show up this one time maybe um oh yeah one of the cool things in this one we get to see some uh footage of the american metalder suit when ryan loses his memory he's in the american metalder suit and it looks better than usual it's usually so stiff and awkward and when the stunt guy inside moves it looks like it's really restrictive and painful to move but here he moves fairly naturally and is able to like uh express some like uh emotion through the suit it's nothing amazing but it's definitely better than what they usually do with it they have it like just standing there uh moving controls in the ship or it's just a really quick shot of it running or something somewhere but here they do some more with it, and I kind of wonder why they didn't do stuff like this with it more often. Jeb gets some funny moments. Uh, Woody at the newspaper place isn't as over the top as he usually is, but he's kind of funny. Not really. 
he's more just a standard character in this. He's not the over-the-top goofball guy that he has been previously. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Anyway, okay episode. Uh, the whole plot with Ryan getting amnesia at the same time as the woman, like I said, that felt really convenient and kind of forced, but I don't know. Like, I understand why they did it that way, so that there'd be a parallel between the hero's plot and the, like, civilian plot, but, eh. I don't think it works very well here for something like that. But, also, I can't really be that mad at it, because they're both handled okay, so, whatever. Anyway, that was an okay episode. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.